Hello, you absolute legends. In May of 2019, the Japanese speedrunner Zaya did something incredible. He collected the star Big House in the Sky without using the carpet. This was the first time in history it had been done legitimately, and it was a monumental achievement. It was massive because the strategy Zaya used had been considered for all intents and purposes too hard for a human to realistically do. But if they could do it, it would save a ton of time. In fact, it would save up to a minute in 120 star speedruns, the longest category in Super Mario 64, easily the biggest time save found in over a decade. Zaya gave people hope that maybe, just maybe, the infamous strategy known as Carpetless would become a reality. But this hope was in vain. Zaya managed to do it, but he did it by replaying the same star over and over again for literally hundreds of hours until he finally made it. The thought of doing this in a 120 star run was an enjoyable one, but was still incredibly naive. Carpetless is implemented in the stage Rainbow Ride, which is the last level speedrunners enter in 120 star runs. You would have to grind out a good run and then wait an hour and a half before finally attempting it. Barely anyone could do it in single star runs, let alone in a speed run this long. Carpetless remained a dream, and it seemed like that may be the case forever. But there was more than one way to skin a cat, and while the community and public at large was focusing on this insane strategy using a glitched bob -omb that was unrealistically hard, a different method was slowly brewing. Over the past decade and a half, piece by piece, a new strategy was being crafted. Originally, it was again seen as something no human could ever do, and this time, they were probably right. No one could even replicate it in single star runs, but all they needed was one final breakthrough. And in September of 2023, that breakthrough came, when the Tassa Crithalith found a humanly viable setup, and this time, it was for real. It wasn't easy, but it was doable and consistent. SM64 speedrunners started clamoring to break the world record. Surely, armed with a new one minute time save, this would be an easy task. But shockingly, it took a month. An entire month before someone finally managed to break the existing world record by one second. Once it was broken, however, the floodgates finally opened. Needless to say, this is just the beginning. In this video, we will take a quick look at how the holy grail of Super Mario 64 speedrunning was finally found. I really hope you enjoy. Now Legends, this video is sponsored by Dungeon Hunter 6. The classic hack and slash franchise is back with its brand new latest installment. Dungeon Hunter 6 is a free to play mobile action RPG, where you play as a bounty hunter attempting to not only conquer, but capture a ton of challenging and interesting bosses. The game has literally just been released and I've been having a blast playing through it. Once you defeat a boss, you can then summon them to join your party. You can select up to three lieutenants who will follow you anywhere and perform their own combo skills. The graphic are honestly top tier, showcasing stunning skill animations, and it all just looks fantastic and runs extremely smoothly. There is already tons to do, including the main storyline, a huge selection of bosses, PvP battles, guild warfare, and the skill and equipment customization allows you to perfect your own build. Dungeon Hunter 6 is free and available on Android and iOS. Use my link in the description or scan the QR code on screen and you'll get a special starter pack worth $50. Plus, you can use your game account to enter the free launch Lucky Spin event to win great prizes like an iPhone, PS5, and more. Check the description for details. The idea of reaching the star Big House in the Sky without using the carpet has been around forever. It has always been a worthwhile goal, as the only human viable way to reach the star was by riding a carpet which moves very slowly and can't be sped up. Skipping the carpet and going straight to the star would be much, much faster. The problem is that the star is on top of a roof, and it was just too high to reach with conventional means. Theoretically, getting to this star without the carpet has been known to be possible since 2000. 2009, where the first tool-assisted speedruns were crafted, which made it to the top of the house. But all of these strategies were beyond impossible for a human, and honestly, aren't even worth considering. The first, somewhat plausible method came in 2013, when Snark created a strategy that used a glitched bob -omb. This strategy was incredibly complicated, but at least seemed like it just may be possible. In 2015, Toadfan managed to recreate the strategy on a real console using save states, showing that it was possible to do. But it would take another four years before Zaya did the entire strategy from start to finish. 
This was pretty exciting news when it happened, but the Super Mario 64 speedrunners were quick to squash any thoughts of it being used in a full run. And they were probably right, at least anytime soon. By 2023, the only person to successfully do Carpetless in a run was the runner Parsi, but they failed it many times trying and ultimately lost over 10 minutes. It was still nowhere near being used in a way that actually saved time. But while runners were slowly getting better at using the bob -omb, another method was slowly bubbling to the surface. In April of 2009, before any of the crazy impossible methods were made to get to the star, the tasser Blaze Soul was trying a much simpler idea. He would try to get to the top from a windowsill by using a glitchy wall kick. Glitchy wall kicks allow you to jump off walls at seemingly impossible angles by bonking where two walls meet. It's a very precise and complex trick, and if you want a good technical explanation, I'll put a link in the description to a video by Bismuth, which covers it in great detail. Here's a small clip though to give you an idea. Now at this point, Mario is already set to be able to wall kick on an extreme, but since then the reference to wall changed. So he is able to wall kick, but off the other wall which he's nearly parallel to. When wall kicking, the wall acts like a mirror, so Mario comes off the wall with the same angle he hit it with. This is why Mario is able to wall kick, yet stay roughly in the same direction. Blaze Soul would use the corner of the inside of the window and the outside wall to do a glitchy wall kick and get some extra height along the outside. He then did another wall kick to get even more height, but ended up too far away from the wall. Blaze Soul didn't make it all the way, but they had certainly found the first piece of the puzzle. This idea would lay dormant for over a decade until when in February of 2021, the Tassa Frame Perfection would find the second piece of the puzzle and make it all the way to the roof. The problem Blaze Soul had is that the second wall kick pushed him too far away from the wall, so he just ended up falling down. Frame Perfection discovered that if you start the sequence with a very specific angle, you can get two glitchy wall kicks. This means the second glitchy wall kick will push you up towards the wall instead of away. This enabled him to get on top. But to be sure, this technique was far too precise for a human to do. The angle you needed was insane, the positions you needed were insane, everything about this was insane, and you just barely made it up. One of the reasons it was so hard is because you didn't just need to get enough height to make it up to the roof, you needed extra height to account for the fact that Mario ends up butt sliding due to the roof's angle. Once in a butt slide, Mario cannot take any actions for 5 frames, so he will end up sliding downwards. Therefore, you need to account for this and get even higher. And because of this, it was just barely possible. This was still a huge breakthrough though, and was an exciting discovery. Here's a clip from a video Drogi released when this was found, and based on the way he was describing it, I could have told you this video was from September 2023 and you wouldn't know the difference. Hi, this is Drogi, and you might have heard that the whole SM64 community is in turmoil right now because a new setup has been found for the holy grail of Super Mario 64 speedrunning, which is carpetless. However, it was soon realized this wasn't going to happen. The inputs required were just too precise. He won't even wall kick, he just gets like a glitchy bonk. I don't even know how to wall kick, far less glitchy wall kick. Yeah, I don't know how to get the wall kick. How do you even get a wall kick, period, here, on a slant? Right, so whatever, this is cringe. Obviously this is uh, a TAS only thing. But the other version is even more, the old one is more human friendly. When tricks are this precise, more than anything, what players really need is a setup. A way to easily put Mario in the same position and facing the same angle every time. Without a setup to make these variables consistent, it's useless. And that's where the Tasser Critholith comes in. Critholith is a bit of a genius, with degrees in mathematics and experimental physics. Plus, he has years of professional experience in programming. Let's just say he's a bit smarter than me. In 2022, Critholith created a tool that would allow Mario to solve problems using brute force. He would put Mario in a position, let the tool run as many possible input combinations as it could, and then check to see if one was more optimal than the existing knowledge. The tool was called Scattershot, and by 2023, Scattershot had already been used to great effect, though it had mostly found extremely minor optimizations that were either extremely difficult or TAS only. 
Usually, it found time saves of several frames. But in September of 2023, Chrysalith would test Scattershot on Rainbow Ride and see if he could solve Carpetless. He placed Mario on the windowsill and left Scattershot running. Within an hour, it had already found its way to the roof. An hour doesn't seem like a long time, but because Scattershot doesn't have to physically render the game or run slow enough for a human to play it, it can run way faster than the game normally does. In fact, it's so fast that one hour of Scattershot playing Super Mario 64 is equivalent to over 100 years of real time. Scattershot seemed to find the same strategy that was found by Frame Perfection two years earlier. Two very precise glitchy wall kicks. And at first, Chrysalith didn't think much of it. But the next day, he realized there was a difference. And a very important difference. As I mentioned before, when Mario lands on the roof, he enters a butt slide. This was assumed to be just a fact, based on the angle of the roof. But for some reason, when Scattershot landed on the roof, he landed on his feet. Scattershot had found a very specific angle that would enable Mario to not butt slide at all. This was massive, because it meant that he wouldn't need to get that extra height, and thus the trick would not need to be as precise. With less precision, this meant a humanly viable setup may be possible. With this huge breakthrough, the next step was finding a setup. One of the amazing features of Scattershot is the ability to limit Mario's actions to those that are easily reproducible. It's still brute force, but if you only allow it to take simple actions like kick, punch, backflip, etc., then if it does find a setup using only those, a human should be able to easily recreate them. And Scattershot was able to find a simple setup. And on the 18th of September, Chrysalith made it public. But unfortunately, the setup sucked. Getting into position was okay, doing the glitchy wall kick was okay, but once you were in the air, you needed to hold a very specific angle, diagonally down to the right. This angle was extremely precise, and players were only able to get the right angle using an input display. Technically, the angle should be okay to hit because it's right inside the notch of the controller. But as you know, N64 sticks where the notch isn't perfect, and so just holding the stick inside the notch wasn't enough to consistently get the required angle, and players were very open about their dissatisfaction of this new strategy. But all hope wasn't lost, because Scattershot had actually found multiple ways to get up. It's just that Chrysalith chose what he thought would be the most optimal one. He made this decision based on the fact you only needed to pause once between the first and second wall kick. As part of this strategy, you need to switch angles while in midair within a single frame. And to do this, you need to pause buffer. Obviously, if you need to pause more times, it ends up being slower. However, this one pause strategy wasn't going to cut it. So Chrysalith opened up the choices to include setups that needed two or more mid-air angle switches, and thus two or more pauses. With these now included, he found a setup that was not only easier to get into the starting position and angle, but also only required you to use up, down, left, or right while in mid-air. And due to how the dead zone works on the N64 controller, these angles are extremely easy to hit. And thus, the first humanly viable new carpetless strategy was born. It was immediately apparent this new setup was not only possible, but was so consistent that it was certainly going to be the future of 120 star speedruns. Basically, every top 120 star runner had to learn it and had to use it. Just two days after this setup was made, Green Suiji achieved it 11 times in a row. And in early October, Kano pulled it off 19 times in a row. So this new carpetless was a done deal. Based on how fast players could now get this star, they were saving at least 45 seconds, and possibly more if they were doing it well. All of the top 120 star runners resurfaced to be the very first to snag a new world record with Carpetless. But shockingly, it just didn't happen as fast as everyone thought. Players were getting runs that were easily fast enough, but when it came down to the end, they always choked in one way or another. The new Carpetless is a scary strategy. If you mess up, you're dead. And this comes one hour and 30 minutes into a run. 
And obviously, if you are this far into a run, you're going to be on good pace, and you're going to be nervous. The runner Gothic Logic was the first player to get a new personal best using Carpetless, only a week after the setup was found. But the world record is a much more high stakes run, and because so many people were hyped and excited about the prospect of a new world record, most runners simply couldn't handle the pressure, even if on paper they were more than capable of smashing the record with Carpetless. But finally, on the 12th of October, Super Mario 64 legend Punkation shocked many people by being the first to set a new world record, beating the existing record held by Ouija by a single second. I think I'm tying it. it it's a, it's 34, right? Did I, did I just get the most cringe world record of all time? Oh my god. This is so fucking cringe. Punkation was the undisputed champion of 120 star back in 2014, which is pretty ancient. And these days, while he's definitely still a top contender, he isn't necessarily considered the fastest. But maybe it's all of those years of experience that allowed him to hold it together when the job needed to be done. Once this first record fell, it seems like the dam may have finally broken. Several days later on the 17th of October, Karen beat Punkation's record by another second. And then two days after that on the 19th, Marlene took the record down to 137.14. At last, a decent drop. But rest assured, this is just the beginning. Speedrunners like Liam were already getting runs that were 136 pace before this new carpetless. It is a certainty that 136 will happen soon, and then from there, 135 is likely to follow. And right on time, when I was about to release this video, Corinne smashed the world record again, getting a 136.48, becoming the first person in history to break the 137 barrier. <laughs> this new carpetless is easily the biggest Super Mario 64 discovery in over a decade, but it doesn't make things any easier. We are now seeing many good runs fall to pieces near the end. The idea that if you nail this one trick, you immediately save at least 45 seconds creates a huge amount of tension, anxiety, and pressure. For a while, this is going to be difficult, but once things calm down, players learn to relax, and the world record becomes relatively optimized again, I think Carpetless will just be another strategy players use, just like any other. In another one or two years, we won't think anything of it. This strategy is so precise and complex, it needed an external tool to find. So this might just be the beginning of the future of Super Mario 64 speedrunning. Thank you so much for watching, you legends. I hope you're having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.